Hey folks, for those of you that are new to this channel, every 100 subscribers this channel gets, up to 1,000, I do a sort of special celebration video. Usually that consists of interviewing a professional from the tech industry. But because that's not entirely possible right now, I thought I would try something a little bit different. So I reached out to my followers on Twitter and asked them what they think I should do for my 400 subscribers video special. And there was one response that was from an incredible mentor of mine, Mr. Lee Rathbone, that stood out to me. He suggested that I talk about testing. I know, testing. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to talk about testing. And in particular, I want to talk about how developers write tests and what that means. I want to briefly explain it, and then I want to share with you my own personal experiences with testing and writing tests, and why now I have completely changed my opinion on writing tests and testing suites with a real-world story that happened during my developer career to help me change my opinion. So let's do this. Hi folks, my name is Ben and welcome back to the channel. Before we dive in, this of course is a celebration video and I wanna take this opportunity to say a massive, massive thank you to you all. Because if you hadn't already guessed it, as of filming this video, we have passed 400 subscribers to the channel. I am so, so grateful to you all for your support. Honestly, for me, numbers was never something that was important in this endeavor. However, the number of subscribers, I guess, is a really good metric to at least tell me that I'm doing something correct. So, what on earth am I talking about? Testing. Obviously, testing is the act of taking something and making sure that it still works the way that you expect it to work. The kind of tests that I want to talk about today in this video is actually the code that is written by mostly developers, I suppose, to test the actual production or feature code. So to make sense of it, of course, there is manual testing where somebody will, in my world, pick up an app and hit buttons to make sure that it still does what it should do. But I'm talking about the sort of automation testing, the automatic testing, the testing that's done by the computer in code. The act of testing, of course, in general, is incredibly important to make sure that something that you are continually working on continually works and the way that you expect it. When you add new features, those new features don't destroy the rest of the app. So in my world, when we are about to release a new version of the app to the store, we do a full regression test on it. That, in our world, is a manual testing process. A tester has a list of scenarios that they have to check over every time a regression test happens. They do that thing, see what results they get, and check that it is the correct results. However, whenever we do releases or any sort of uh, new feature code or bug fixes, we write unit tests and instrumentation tests, particularly in the Android world. They can be oversimplified to these. One, unit tests. That is a very thin, ambiguous slice of the app functionality. For example, you might unit test a function. You give it some input and you expect some certain output to come out. For example, if you had a function that added up two numbers, you would give it the number one and the number two, and you would hope that you get number three out. If you didn't, something is wrong with the code. And unit tests are a really nice way of testing the actual logic, the things that the user doesn't actually see. However, on the other side, there is user interface testing. A lot of systems have user interfaces and they need testing too. Often these tests involve um, showing the user interface as it is or as it should be and mocking or pretending everything else in the app. For example, I might want to test that I can type into a text input area and hit a green button. Then everything behind the scenes, all the logic-y stuff is mocked out, it's pretended, it's sort of um, got rid of so that we can just test the user interface. We'll then pretend the results come back and we'll see that the user interface displays them as it should. Although sometimes it may be a laborious, annoying process, testing is important. It gives us, the developers, and everyone else in our team the confidence that nothing else has broken during our new feature code being implemented or our bug fix being implemented. It gives us confidence that the software is still working as it should. And, of course, it gives us confidence that some form of human error hasn't come into the process that perhaps during some new feature implementation, a developer hasn't accidentally commented out a line of code somewhere else in the app. Fun fact, that exact scenario has happened to me often, and I thank unit tests for saving my ass. I'm no expert in the testing world at all, but from my understanding, there are sort of, if I really boil it down, there are two ways to do testing. There is writing the test code after you've written the actual feature code, or there's writing the test code before you write the feature code. Essentially, I'm probably way oversimplifying this. 
The first one I like to refer to as after the fact testing. You've written all your feature code, you've done the fun creative bit of the development, and now you just need to write the code that is part of the test suite. The second one, which is sort of writing your tests first and then writing the code after, actually has a name. It's called Test Driven Development, or TDD. TDD is where a developer will first write um, the test. They will write a test and then they will run it. Of course, immediately the test will fail because they've not actually written the code. Then they will write the actual um, code for the app or whatever to make that unit test green mark. And then they will build on that until they have the finished functionality of the feature or bug fix. And that's kind of nice then because they don't have to do the annoying process after writing their feature code of, of writing all of the unit tests. They've already done it during the development process. Now I want to tell you how I felt about writing tests and unit tests and instrumentation tests, past tense. And then I want to tell you a story that made me change my opinion entirely. So for a bit of context, I went to university and studied computer games programming. We learned very little about writing proper tests and the reasons why testing was important. So for me, the first real experience I had with unit tests and testing as a whole was in industry. And initially, to me, it felt like this thing that was forced upon developers. This thing that was perhaps ordered downwards to us developers from the business higher up because perhaps they didn't trust us or they thought we developers were cowboys that were just coding something and, and not worrying about the consequences of it. To me, unit tests and writing them felt restraining. It felt like a chore. I didn't see the value in it at all. And alongside that, there was this other thing that was like design architecture patterns. For example, MVP and MVVM that again, at uni, I had a very sort of thin slice of experience on. To me, coming into a professional workplace, it seemed like these design architecture patterns and unit tests seemed to go hand in hand. And to me, the novice, it seemed like you architectured your app or you structured it and built up the files and the, the structures and the folders so that you could write unit tests for it. And at the beginning, to me, it seemed like I was often having to go back and change my actual code that I had written for the app itself to make the unit tests happy to make the unit tests work. And for me, that really confused me and made me start to really dislike writing unit tests. And of course, as I said before, unit testing was always something that I did right at the end of the development process. So once I'd finished all the fun, creative work, I would then have to write unit tests just to get the PR approved. In my mind, when you were writing actual code, you could be creative, you could have fun doing it. You were always experimenting and pushing yourself to make the best code, the most efficient code, the code that worked best for the customer or the user. Whereas when you were writing unit tests, you were just writing lines of code that said, do this, it should do this, do this, it should do this. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that quite a few developers had the same feelings that I did. However, I do not feel like that anymore. Sure, unit testing can sometimes still be annoying, but now I really see the value in it. And maybe it's because I work alongside some real testing fanatics that are always using the expression, ah, let's push testing left. <laughs> in fact, those people that I just referenced, I think are nowadays incredibly important. The people that strive to make testing happen earlier in the process. And as I said, now I see the value in testing and writing full and rich and all encompassing unit tests and instrumentation tests and journey tests and all of the different kind of tests. And now I want to tell you the real world story that actually happened to me in my developer career that made me realize how, how important unit tests are and testing suite as a whole. So in this story, the code base used Git as its version control system. If you don't know what Git is and you want to know more, then I have a whole video series about it, which is linked up here. Git is a version control system, so it tracks changes to the project over time so that you can go back if necessary. On this one particular day, we were having discussions about security and protecting the code base. And we reviewed the code a little bit and we noticed that there was a sensitive file in the code base that had been tracked in the Git history, meaning that that file that held secrets was actually uploaded to a server somewhere and was in our code base for the past year or year and a half. It had accidentally made its way in. So we needed to remove it. And for those of you that have dealt with removing things from entire Git history, you know it's sort of not that easy. There is a Git command called git filter branch, which lets you go back through commits and do some sort of action to each of those commits. Essentially going back in time throughout the entire history of the code repository and doing something to it. Of course, that something was removing that sensitive file. Of course we did it, and then with anything that is Git-based, where you're refactoring the history of the branch, things got weird. 
and I can't exactly put my finger on what it was, but code was out of place. Code was in some branches and not in others. And it had been a long time since we'd written certain files and weren't sure which version of the file was correct. So the very first thing we did was of course build a version of the app and manually test it, flick through some of the screens and check it still worked as it should. But when you've got a really big app with loads of lines of code and lots and lots of different features, that would take quite a while to test every single scenario manually. And if you hadn't already guessed, this is the exact moment that I was thankful that we had a massive test suite that we'd been working on for years. In just a few minutes, we were able to run our entire unit test suite and our entire instrumentation test suite and prove definitively that our app was not broken, that whatever versions of the files that we had decided were the correct versions of the file were the correct versions of the file. And the code worked as it should. And that is the exact moment that I exclaimed out loud and proudly, thank you unit test suite. Because if we didn't have that testing suite, then we would manually have to go through every single scenario that we've done over the past three or four years of developing that entire application and check everything worked as it should. We would have to do the regression tests of regression tests. And as a lazy developer, that's not something I ever want to do. The value of unit tests and instrumentation tests and all the different kind of tests immediately became apparent and obvious to me. Now, whenever I'm writing new features or bug fixes, I write unit tests and sure, it's not always fun and sometimes it still is a bit of a chore and perhaps I'll never get rid of that mindset, but at least now I see the value. Humans, although we are fantastic, creative, innovative creatures, we're not perfect and we make mistakes. Computers and code, they don't make mistakes. They just do what you code them to do. So the next time you're sitting down writing these boring, annoying unit tests that feel like a chore, just remind yourself very, very quickly that mistakes happen and these unit tests will be there to save your ass. So that's it. Thank you again for watching this video. And of course, uh, thank you for helping me get past the 400 subscribers milestone. Of course, if you enjoyed this style of video that is quite different to the ones that I usually do, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe and of course, hit that bell icon if you want to get notified about when I release new videos. As usual, thank you so much for watching. See you next time. A lot of people in my team are probably gonna see this video and they're gonna go, who the hell's that? And what have you done with Ben Cadell? Yeah, because they know how much I just like writing unit tests. <laughs> man. <laughs> this is weird filming outside. I'm very handsy. Whoa, it's windy. Come on, wind, but we're off. It's pretty good, it's pretty good. There are birds everywhere. I've never seen so many birds. What is going on? No, no. First time. Pick us my pen.